Hey everyone, Mr. Macintosh here, and yesterday Apple released the macOS Big Sur 11.6.5 update. It's not all about Monterey. There's still plenty of people that have Big Sur installed on their Mac, and it's running really well for them. In this video, I'm going to go over everything that you're going to need to know about this update, plus news on OpenCore Legacy Patcher unsupported Macs. Let's jump in and get started. The macOS Big Sur 11.6.5 update was released on March 14, 2022 at 12 noon Central Standard Time. Along with the release was iOS 15.4, iPadOS 15.4, tvOS 15.4, AudioOS 15.4, and watchOS 8.5. On the Mac side, Monterey 12.3 was released along with Catalina Security Update 2022-003, Xcode 13.3, and Safari was released separately today on the 15th for macOS Big Sur and macOS Catalina. Our test device today is a 2020 M1 MacBook Air running 11.6.4. And to update, all we need to do is go into System Preferences and then click on Software Update, and then it'll automatically check for update. If the updates are not showing up for you, you can refresh by clicking on the Advanced button and then clicking OK again, and it should refresh, and hopefully it'll show up for you there. In the Software Update for macOS Big Sur, you'll notice something right away, and that is Apple is trying to push you to macOS Monterey and making this like the major part of the software update pane. All the Big Sur updates are hidden inside the other updates are available section. So you actually have to hit more info to be able to see those updates. Now, yesterday, all you would have seen is the 11.6.5 update, but today Apple usually releases the Safari update for Big Sur and Catalina a day later. So now 15.4 is in here. So all you need to do is click on install now and click on the agree screen here and it will automatically start to download both updates. It will install Safari first and then it will start to prepare the Mac OS Big Sur update for restart. The update size is all based on how many operating system versions you are behind. Since we're on 11.6.4 it's the smallest update around 2.55 gigabytes. But let's say you're on Mac OS Big Sur 11.5. It's going to be a little bit larger because it has to get all the other previous fixes from 11.6.3 two and one in the same update. So that's why it's larger in size. Now, what I'm also going to do is keep an eye because I got a couple comments saying, well, hey, when I install this update, what is the size of the update? How much space does it take up after the installation? Well, what I did is I'm going to take a screenshot of the system here and it's showing 15.32 gigabytes. And we're going to check that after the system restarts and installs the update. If you have an M1 Mac, the firmware was updated to 7459.101.2. If you have an Intel T2 Mac from 2018 to 2020, the Bridge OS software on there was also updated to 1916.14.242.5.1. Safari was also updated to 15.4 as a separate release, as we saw in the software update, 16.613.117.1.11. Apple also released a full installer in case you wanted to create a USB installer or just upgrade from Catalina or Mojave, for example. And I keep that in my Mac OS Big Sur full installer database, and you can download the install assistant here. If you have an M1 Apple Silicon Mac and you want to be able to restore with Apple Configurator 2, Apple has stopped releasing the IPSWs at 11.6. So if you wanted to restore that way, you will have to go to 11.6 and then use software update to get to 11.6.5. Let's talk about the security content of the 11.6.5 update. Apple puts out these security documents that go over each individual security vulnerability that is fixed and gives credit to the security researcher of each fix. Some people are anonymous, but others are stated here in the notes. There is 19 separate security vulnerabilities that are fixed in the 11.6.5 update. And you can see them all here. And I'll put a link in the description of all those fixes. Also, as we saw in the software update pane, Safari is a separate download. So just because you install the security update doesn't mean you get the Safari fixes. In this Safari 15.4 update, there's five different security vulnerabilities patched in this update. Okay, our MacBook Air M1 is back up on 11.6.5 and the build version is 20G527. Now on how long it took to install the 11.6.5 update, it went fairly quickly. The preparing was saying it was gonna take about 15 minutes, but it only took about seven minutes. Once it restarted to the actual installation, that took about 17 minutes. So a total, including preparation, 24 minutes from start of preparing to user desktop. So how much space did the update take on the system? As you can 
can see here, here's my screenshot that I took before we made the jump here. And the system was at 15.32 gigabytes. And I loaded up the storage here in the About This Mac and then clicking on the Storage tab. And the system here is the same at 15.32 gigs. So there wasn't any additional space taken up by the system update. Now let's talk about any fixes or enhancements in the 11.6.5 update. And right now there is none. Apple normally does not release any bug fix information or enhancements for the minus two OSs. For example, now that Monterey is the main OS for Big Sur and Catalina, all they do is tell us about security fixes. They don't say anything about any new features or enhancements or resolve issues. And normally I have to hear secondhand from someone else or something was fixed. And in this particular release, I don't don't have anything that was noted so far. That's unfortunate because Apple still does fix things in these releases, but don't tell us. So it's kind of strange that they do that, but that's the situation. Now let's go over the benchmarks. I ran this Geekbench 5 score here and we have it on 11.6.4 and we got a single core of 1745 and a multi-core of 7686. And then once we made it to 11.6.5, we've got a single of 1739 and a multi of 7696. Now keep in mind, just like I mentioned in previous videos, this is just being run to make sure that there's no big gaps or any kind of performance issues that might happen because of the update. We want to see them pretty close and they're really close here. So everything looks okay. Now let's talk about some unsupported Mac news with Open Core Legacy Patcher and Mac OS Big Sur. Now I mentioned on my Mac OS Monterey 12.3 update video yesterday that Open Core Legacy Patcher developers released 0.4.3. Now don't worry, I'm going to go over a video about this tomorrow covering all the different changes. But for now, I made sure that I got my early 2013 15-inch MacBook Pro that's unsupported for Big Sur up and running and updated to 11.65 and use the brand new 0.4.3 open Core legacy patcher app and everything worked great now the only thing is that we need to check when we're done with the update is to make sure that we do not need to install any of the post volume patches now what's nice about big sur is it covers a lot of the metal supported macs like this and you do not need to install any patches so how do we know you can click on this button and it'll tell you right now for mac os big sur you do not need to install any of the post volume patches for maybe wi-fi or the graphics acceleration now this is nice because we're fully supported. So we have the smaller Delta updates. We don't have to download the full 11 gigabyte download and we can use some metal heavy apps that don't cause problems that they do when we have to use the graphics acceleration packages that Mac OS Monterey has to use for this model of Mac. So that's why it's okay to stay on Big Sur so you can get the full experience if you need to. Again, you can still update to Mac OS Monterey to get some of the new features like uh, AirPlay or Universal Control, but keep in mind, because you have to install those packages, there's a few small drawbacks. Do I recommend installing the Big Sur 11.6.5 update? Yes, I do. Especially for all the security fixes in the update, along with the Safari fixes in the separate release to be able to be patched for those vulnerabilities. That's why I do these videos. I make sure I install on my Macs here to make sure I don't see any issues before I recommend it to you to be able to install. Now, could there be a small issue here or there? Yes, there could, but that's why I always recommend that you use Time Machine or just use an external hard drive to back up all your files before you do because if something goes wrong you can always rebuild and put those files back on your system. And that's the 11.6.5 update. Thanks for watching. If this video created value for you I'd appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up or a share. If you want to see more videos like this in the future click on that subscribe button and you can also follow me on Twitter for the latest Mac news and I wanted to thank all my viewers and especially my Patreon members. You guys are really awesome and I wanted to also welcome a couple new Patreon members, a trombone player, Dennis and Eric, thanks for joining, and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.